Excellent is your name. Excellent is your power. Lord, you are wonderful. My Lord, you are excellent. Oh, yes, Lord. Lord, you are, you are so, good. so good. Yes, Lord. Lord, you are Lord, you are wonderful, my Lord. You are excellent. Almighty God, you are so good. You are so kind, yes, oh, Almighty God. You are, you are so, so good. You are so kind, Jesus. Oh, Almighty God. God. You, you are so good. You are, are so, so kind, kind. Oh, Almighty God. God. I am that I am. Oh, yes, Lord. I am that I am. I am that I am. I am I am. Glory be, Glory be to your name. I am Daraya. I am Daraya. Glory be to your name. I am Daraya. Oh, yes, Lord, I am Daraya. Glory be to your name. I am that I am. I am that I am. I am that I am. Glory be to your name. Every living soul, every living soul, praise the Lord. Every living soul, praise the Lord. Oh, yes, Lord. Every living soul, every living soul, praise the Lord. Every living soul, every living soul, praise the Lord. Are you a living soul? Oh, a living soul, praise the Lord. Oh, Salive, the most Salive, the most Serenity, my life today. The most Serenity, the most Serenity, the most Serenity, my life today. Are you a living soul? Every living soul, praise the Lord. And I will shine the kerebos and the raba. Oh yes, Lord! If you're a living soul this evening, let's continue to worship the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. I am that I am, ancient of days. We worship your name, O Lord. You are a great, mighty God. Thank you, eternal rock of ages. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. Oh, yes, Lord. In our life today, the most the most in my life today. You reign in our life. You reign in everything that we do. There is no one we can compare to you. We give you all the praises. We give you all the honor, all the adoration be unto you this evening. As we have come together, Holy Spirit, we surrender every conversation tonight into your end. Speak expressly to us tonight as you will be leading us tonight. Father, we ask that the Spirit of God will move mightily in our midst. Amen. Amen. And let only your name be glorified. We do yes, not want Lord. to hear from flesh. We do not want to hear from, from any human philosophy. But Lord, Holy Spirit, speak expressly to us tonight. Amen. Let, us, let the name of the Father be glorified. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. We have prayed. Amen. 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 Turn it over to Sister, Sister K. Is she still on? Good evening. Everyone. 
Today we'll be studying um, chapter 13 of the book of Deuteronomy. That's my beginning. Can everybody hear me okay? Yes. Okay. Yes. Awesome. I worship has to be punished. That's the. If there arises among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams, and he gives you a sign or a wonder, and the sign or the pass of which he spoke to you, saying, Let us go after other gods which you have not known, and let us serve them. You shall not listen to the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams. For the Lord your God is testing you to know whether you love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. You shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice. You shall serve him and hold fast to him. But that prophet or that dreamer of dreams shall be put to death because he has spoken in order to turn you away from the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt and redeemed you from the house of bondage to entice you from the way in which the Lord your God commanded you to walk. So you shall put away the evil from your midst. If your brother, the son of your mother, your son or your daughter, the wife of your bosom, or your friend, who is as your own soul, secretly entices you, saying, let us go and serve other gods, which you have not known, neither you nor your father, of the gods of the people which are all around you, which are all around you, near to you, or far off from you, from one end of the earth to the other end of the earth. You shall send to him or listen to him, nor shall you ask or nor shall your eye pity him, nor shall you spare him or conceal him, but you shall surely kill him. Your hand shall be first against him to put him to death, and afterward the hand of all the people, and you shall stone him with the stones until he dies because he sought to entice you away from the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. So all Israel shall hear and fear and not again do such wickedness as this among, among you. If you hear someone in one of your cities which the Lord your God gives you to dwell, dwell in saying, Corrupt men have gone out from among you and enticed the inhabitants of their city, saying, Let us go and serve other gods which you have not known. Then you shall inquire, search out, and ask diligently. And if it is indeed true and certain that such an abomination was committed among you, you shall surely strike the inhabitants of that city with the edge of the sword utterly destroying it, all that is in it and its livestock with the edge of the sword. You and you shall gather all its plunder into the middle of the streets and completely burn with fire the city and all its plunder. For the Lord your God, for the Lord your God, it shall be a heap forever. It shall not be built again. So none of the accused things shall remain in your hand that the Lord may turn from the fierceness of his anger and show you mercy, have compassion on you and multiply you just as he swore to your fathers, because you have listened to the voice of the Lord your God and to keep all his commandments, which I command you today to do what is right in the eyes of the Lord your God. God bless the reading of his words in Jesus' name. So idol worship, we've heard this before and it's going to continually be preached and it's going to continually be a reminder to each and every one of us. Our God is a jealous God. Yes. He does not want to share his glory with anyone. Right. And we can see he kept on reminding them that 
he's the God that brought them out of the land. That's um, verse five here. The Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt and redeemed you from the house of bondage. He's trying to remind them how powerful he is that you will leave a powerful God and go to one of his, his creations to worship it. That is very, very painful. That is disrespectful to God. He is all powerful. You have seen it. You have experienced it. This is something that man cannot do. And yet, we as human beings keep going back to the things he created to worship it. That is why the punishment, I was looking at the punishment, I was like, this is really harsh. But he's trying to eliminate anything that will corrupt his children. In the beginning, where we talked about that prophet that um, dream dreams and it comes to pass, it's happening today. Mm. People would like to have control over others. Mm. Have the enjoy power. Mm. And they try to use it to like put people in bondage. Mm. And God does not like that. He created us. He had the power to control us. He had the power to leave us in a place, put us in bondage, but he free us from bondage. So why are we allowing? So he doesn't want anyone or anything to take us back to bondage. We have been set free by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. So going backward. That's what I saw in the beginning of the reading. Punishment for those trying to lure others into idol worship may seem harsh, like we saw in verse 5, verse 9, and 10. But God did not want his children deceived or corrupted. He also wanted to make an example of those people that perpetrated that thing to him. That's a heinous crime. To deter others from live from luring people or engaging in idol worship. Anyone, anything that tries to take away from God is evil. God will destroy everything that tries to take his place. So let's see how that's applicable in our today uh, in our current um, world. We can look at the book of, let's look at this here. Colossians 3, 5. And it says, therefore put to death your members which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. And I have a, uh, I can pick a summary of, a few things that we can call modern day idols. Mm. Money is the number one modern day idol. Money is not bad. It's a tool that God has given us to live in this world. But it's how you use that money, how you pursue that money that becomes an idol. If that is all that you think about, that is all that you pursue in life. And if the pursuit of money makes you to commit other sins. It is an idol because you do anything to get it. Entertainment, you may say, why entertainment? Again, there's really nothing wrong with entertainment when used in moderation. But when that entertainment, like going on vacations, video games, watching movies, it's the only thing that gives you joy. It's like you live for it. If you don't go on vacation, you feel like, oh, my life is coming to an end. Or video games. Have you seen video game addicts? Like nothing matters to them. Food is irrelevant as long as they can play that video game. Or movie watchers that will sit in front of their TV and be on Netflix from morning till night. Where is God in that mix? Or is it social media? We have so many platforms these days. It's like you want to keep up. You want to see what's happening. And a lot of these things 
are useless information. You're looking at someone else's life. You're watching someone else live their life post good times. And then you're there, oh my goodness. You keep on watching. It's like you become addicted. Where is God in all that? The one that created you, you don't have any time for him. You don't sing praises to him. He's the one that gave you the means to get the social media. He's the one that gave you the means to go on vacation. He's the one that gave you the means to even have video games, know the knowledge and how to do all of these things in our phones. Yes, they're useful to us, but are we spending more times on our phones than on the word of God, than on the things of God, than praising him, than praying to him, than having communication with him, than helping someone in need. When all these things take up our time, we, we need to ask ourselves this question. If you want to know if you are falling into that trap of a modern day idol, where do you spend your time? That 24 hours in the day, can you boldly say that you spent so, so, so amount of hours praying to the Lord, praising him, being in his presence, studying his word, helping someone in need. Where do you spend your money? Is it on the things of this world? You don't care about the work of God. You don't care about those in need around you. You don't care about the important things that will help you spiritually like scriptural books, like a Bible that you can buy and give to someone or something, giving money to a cause, like radio stations that promote the gospel. What are you doing with your money? Where do you get your joy? Is your joy in going on vacations? Is your joy being on social media, posting stuff, trying to make the world believe that you're the best thing ever? And then, what is always on your mind? What is always on your mind? So if you can go through these four questions and self-examine yourself, then you will know if you're falling into that trap of modern day idols and now ask for forgiveness. Because these things lead to destruction if you continually stay in them and remove God from your life because it's gradual. The less time you spend with God, before you know it, you're like, ah, God understands, God understands. Time goes by, and then you are wasting time. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Do we have any contributions this evening? Any contributions? Idol worshippers will be punished. You don't want God to punish. Imagine if Jesus did not come and we had to go through this, someone we knew had to go through this kind of punishment. And in verse nine, it says, you'll be the one that will give the first blow. Let's have contributions, please. I want to hear what you all think about this chapter. Uh, yes, sir. hallelujah. The, when, when, the, way you, the way you just break it down, we are all guilty, to be honest, it's in one way or the other. <laughs> no, there's no one of us on this line that say that they are not guilty of one of, you know, especially more than they um idol worshiper, we are all guilty of it. And, you know, but the only thing that, that, that make us, um, that take us apart from all this is these little things that, this little devotion that we are doing. That's the only thing that take us apart because we're taking our time to participate in something like that, in something like this. And, you know, you know, renew our mind, renew, you know, the word of God in our heart. So that, you know, when these warnings that, you know, you just talked about, you know, we're able to like to, to, to grab them and be able to, 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 um, to, um, to be able to use them and 
kind of fade away from those things that we 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 are we are, we are treasuring on that. You know, I mean, we just pray that the Lord will help us, but at the same time, too, we have to do our own part and and be able to make those changes and be able to like to win other souls, like you know, because a lot of people are going astray and they are doing it not not they are not doing it deliberately, but you know, they are driven away. You know, these things that you know, they, they think that is they're using as the entertainment. This thing that they think that they're treasuring, taking all their, their 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 time away from God. And we pray that the Lord will help us in order for us to be able to overcome these things as we participate in this this gathering. And we pray that the Lord we 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 we, we soften our hearts for us to be able to like to let go of those things and be able to spend more time on Him in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And that's all my contribution again. Thank you so much, Brother Mike. Thank you. I like the way you started off. We need to be honest with ourselves. We are all guilty. That is so true. Um, because we, we can't say that we are not guilty. If, if you don't admit to what is going on, how will you accept the solution? So you have said the very first step, admitting to what is wrong, self-search. And now you know that Yes, I'm guilty. Next step, you go to your father in heaven. He's waiting patiently for you to come to him. Oh. Ask for forgiveness. The Holy Spirit will guide you back on the right track. And then every day, have to go to God in prayer so that he will help you because we need him every day. We need mm. fresh. We need to pray every day. We need to praise mm. him every day. Because the devil is dragging us left, right, and center. The things of this world are pulling us from every angle. If we are not mm. sent in God, you can easily drift away and fall mm. into those that we talked about on Sunday. More mm. control. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Good evening, everybody. Thank you, Sister K. I think I like the way you took the whole thing, you know, bringing it to today's idol modern day idol which is really very good because it has so much correlation with what is actually being discussed today and i believe today is a, just a wake-up call for every one of us to actually know where we stand you know we've seen so many things going astray this modern day that people are running after prophets and i really you know i just want to say um a big you know gratitude to god for letting, you know, a shepherd to see it this way. Because every one of us, we have read Deuteronomy before, and we've never seen, we've never paid attention to this kind of, you know, stories and the uh, Bible, sorry, to this Bible's reading and see how deeper God is actually telling us not to fall into those kind of trap of, you know, the, the dreamers, all those people, they call themselves prophets. You know, I didn't even know we we're going to be treating this kind of topic today. Um, I have an encounter with a sister yesterday and we were actually talking. I'm sorry, I'm going to take a little bit time just for us to see what was actually discussed on this 13 is happening today. And uh, she was telling me that there was a church they were going to and uh, she didn't actually tell me the name of that church. And that church is in Virginia right here very close to where I live, according to how she described. And uh, they were going there, but unfortunately, they always go there because there's a prophet there, okay? And she now told me, oh, the, uh, Sister Jimmy, you know, we, we, uh, we Nigerians or African people, we love when we hear about prophets. The moments we can see someone that can, you know, see vision on us, we quickly run down there. And she said the, that place was packed every day. They go there every day. They stop going to their home church, you know. And uh, before they realize it, they've gotten to the point that it's they're not following the Bible any longer. It's now the dreamer and the, the, the prophet that is making a decision for them on what to do about their life and what to do on their marriage. And before they realize it, they notice that those homes are getting separated. Like 
the divorce started rising in that church. And to the point that she was being affected too because, because the prophet will be telling the husband or the wife. In our own case, it was the husband the prophet was telling a story that, oh, your wife is doing so, 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 she's doing this to you. And she said there was a separation right away. There's so many things she said, but I have to call it short. She said there was so many separation. The moment the prophet was, you know, injecting those kind of ideas, telling that person that, oh, God said this, God said that about your wife. Then they started stop talking. The, you know, relationship wasn't there any longer. And that is what God was actually telling us because they have already put their mind. They have put all their focus. They have put all their trust. They have put all their belief on the prophets. And that is what is going on today. And we don't even follow the word of God any longer to lead us. Oh, because why? We are too lazy. We are waiting for microwave answer. What the prophet is doing, every one of us can see vision. As long as we can commit to the Holy Spirit. Because one thing that we don't realize is that this Holy Spirit has been in existence before the foundation of the earth. If you want to prove that, go to Genesis 1. When the Bible was saying that the whole place was black, dark. They eat every part, every part of the, the earth and heaven. There was nothing before. He said everything was, you know, void. And the spirit of God was moving. Come on. You can see that the spirit of God has been in existence before the creation of heaven and earth. So I don't know why we have to run after the prophet when that spirit is there to lead us. And God was actually telling us that even... He was telling us that it's even better for that person because we are making other people to stumble. And this particular thing is actually, this particular Bible verse tonight, it's actually speaking to every one of us because we are one prophet in one area or the other. What I mean by one prophet in one area, we are, we are God bless us in one, in one talent or the other. In some place, some, some, some people, you know, it might be your actual career that God is actually using you for to provide a services to somebody. How are you using that services that the Lord has given to you to, to give to other brothers or sisters? Are you making them to stumble? And God said it would be better for that person because he said a, a stone will be, run around, will be wrapped around their neck and they will be thrown down to the sea. Anyone that makes the children of God to stumble. So tonight, I think this Bible verse is just telling us to be very careful and stop running after the prophet. It is okay to listen. I'm not saying you should, when people give you vision, a uh, uh, message or anything, you shouldn't listen, but don't talk them to their God. That is what today is telling us. And I pray the Lord will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor Mrs. That is very important. The prophet, they are servants of God. The Lord is using them. He gave them that gift. We as human beings are not supposed to put them on a pedestal and start worshiping them because we always want to hear from God. You can hear from God on your own. All you have to do is develop that relationship and he will speak to you. Let the Lord help us. All contributions, please. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Good evening, everybody. Good evening, Sister Thank you for all the contributions, because that has just been, that this is a very powerful, powerful chapter that we're reading that is clearly speaking to all of us. And I, I thank everybody for all their contributions, because that's also speaking to me. Um, what, one thing I wanted to say, just to kind of echo what Pastor Mrs. just said, and, you know, Yes, we, we need to be very, very careful, you know, chasing after, you know, microwave answers, prophet after prophet. In addition to that, just like God has given us all different gifts, right? We have people that are naturally gifted, you know, I, I, I use the word the gift of gab. They are very charismatic. Mm -hmm. They may not be prophets. Mm -hmm. They may not be in the church. Mm -hmm. They might be around you. 
working close to you. It might be a close friend, it might be a family member, but they are very, very charismatic and very influential. And if one is not careful because of that, you know, charismatic nature of theirs, they can easily sway you and convince you to do something that you naturally will not do, something that will that is de de deviates from what God has commanded us to do. But with the way that they will say it, it will make so much sense to you that you yourself, you don't even realize when you fall into that trap. I, I, have, a, I have a very close friend of mine. Thank God she, she's a believer. <laughs> Thank God she's a believer because she is, I was just thinking about her as we're reading this because she is somebody that is, you know, very charismatic, and is naturally ta talented as well, because I know that the, the, the Holy Spirit is in her. And I'm, I'm encouraging her to hone that gift that is within her because she does have the gift of foresight. She says things out of nowhere and it comes true. And I've been encouraging her to, hey, pray on it and you know, tap into it, all of that, all of that. But can you imagine if her heart is not for God? She can easily use that talent, create a church or create a business, who knows, and just easily manipulate people and sway them and convince them and they deviate and fall, fall, fall from the grace of God. So in as much as, yes, this is cautioning us to be very careful with, you know, who we go to uh, prophet this, prophet that, also be mindful of the people we keep close to us those that are very, very close to us, that know us better than, you know, strangers, that knows the buttons that they can press, that could easily convince us one thing or the other, oh, I know this thing, no, you can just do it this way, next thing you're going to a, a herbalist, they call it herbalist, but it's babalao, you know, you just don't know how, you know, one or, one or two things will just lead you to doing something that you never, ever dreamed in your life that you ever do. So let this just be a, a word of caution for, for all of us to be on guard no matter what, to be mindful. That Holy Spirit, that is the greatest gift that our Heavenly Father has given us. That is the greatest gift because Holy Spirit will not allow us to fall into the church. That ditch that we talked about on Sunday, it will not allow us to fall into that ditch. If we constantly hold on to it, to remind us, to caution us, we just surrender and just, you know, do what we're supposed to. I know it's not easy. We're human beings. You know, life happens. We get distracted and all of that. But I pray, I pray that we'll be encouraged, that we'll be renewed in mind, in spirit to do what we're supposed to do for his kingdom. That's what I wanted to say. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sister Chichi. That was very powerful. Thank you for the contribution so far. They have been very, very um, powerful. Do we have more contributions? Praise God. Um, Praise the living Jesus. Thanks, everybody. Um, I think this this one actually um, came home um, to... to to, to me personally uh, and you know sometimes it's easy to externalize one prophet somewhere but even we ourselves we are prophets yes. and you know like Pastor Mrs. said as that she just said sometimes we look at people who has influence but I myself I have certain influence and I've had certain influence the, the question is have I misled others? Mm. Have I turned others away from him? Mm. You know, have I taken God's glory? Mm. Am I actually the prophet that needs to be stoned rather than the one that's even deceived? Mm. Am I being secretly used by the deceiver? Um, you know, I've told, shared this morning before that I think I've done things, I've, I've ministered things that, you know, in retrospect, I hope that people who, who heard it those times, they, they didn't do anything. And just pulling on to what Sachi said, that let the Holy Spirit guide our hearts. Um, because it's, it is easy to, to introduce self 
into things. Um, and if we are not careful, you know, like Pastor Minister said that we, we become, you know, a stumbling block. We've read it also in the Jonah's book. That's one of the time when I started to question, you know, what I've said in the past myself, that I, if I directed people to God, I've directed people to myself or to, to whatever wisdom that I gave, or am I actually leading them to God? And, you know, the, the scripture that sort of came to mind to me when Paul was trying to put, you know, trying to put a shackle around himself, it was in Galatians 1, 8 to 9, when he said that, but do we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. Mm-hmm. Paul is talking about angels, if he appears to you. I said, as we said before, so now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than you have received, let it be a cost, which is similar to what we just heard. Mm-hmm. And it's, Paul is literally putting a cost upon himself. Paraventure is talking about something else other than the gospel of Christ. The question is, am I talking, as, talking about something else other than the gospel of Christ? And it's, it, it's a question that, you know, I, I believe that uh, um, I will spend time with the Holy Spirit to really search deeper in my, heart, in my own heart. And I hope that, you know, um, some of us will all do the same. I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. Man, thank you so much, Brother Toby. Do we have more contributions? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. Good I really want a good evening, everybody. I really want to thank uh, God for the way you explain it with uh, care and uh, all the contributions. I really appreciate it all. It has blessed me so much. And then, uh, you know, there is something that Pastor Missy said that is where I want to share briefly. It's very instructive. And then, uh, is, that is actually the name of the game now in Nigeria and South Africa, mostly. Many people are be deceived. They stage miracle, all kinds of things are going on. But when you look at these things, and you really have love in your heart for God, you cannot bet with. It's so painful. And many of these people, out of ignorance, they are being dragged. They have maybe challenges. They have problems. They cannot read the Bible by themselves, just as uh, one of us says that they are lazy, you know? So they just take advantage of them. So many things are going on in Nigeria right now. So both politically, Nigeria is something else right now. Fear, apprehension. Then you go to South Africa, uh, if you go to YouTube, come on, you will see what is going on. So now, what are we supposed, what is God's appointment for us as believers? We know how God is dealing with us. We know we have heart for God. We love God. God the Bible says the Lord Jesus is sitting at the right hand of God until all his enemy be brought under his feet. Who are the people to bring his enemy under his feet? Brethren, it's you and I. We are not. We are. It's you and I. We have work before us. So, but the more we consecrate ourselves, the more we come together, share, rub our minds together, trusting the help of the Holy Spirit, and yielding ourselves to the word of God, we are hearing. And we are saying to the Lord, like Isaiah, here I am, use me. God is pleased. God will use, you know, he's going to carry out his activity through the instrumentality of men, you and I. Let us read something in Isaiah 51 and look for. Isaiah 51 says, the spirit of the, Isaiah 51, I want to, if you have your Bible, brethren, open your Bible, let's read it together. Isaiah 51, it says, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me 
to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captive, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the several year of the Lord, and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the day of the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the law, that he might be glorified. Now, if you look at from verses one to two, to proclaim the acceptable year, acceptable year of the law and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort our more Israel. When we go to four, you will see that the Lord Jesus, his, his mission in his flesh, when he came in the flesh, his first advent, stop in chapter, 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 I mean, verse two, A. Eh? So the day of vengeance, that day of, and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that more, from there down, the Lord actually performed all those activities. He healed the sick, he raised the dead, he, he, he carried out that mission. The Bible says that he was anointed with the Holy Ghost, with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good. All the people that were brought to him that were sick during his earthly ministry, none of them went back or healed. The Bible say, will say he healed all. He did that. But when you come to Luke chapter 4, Luke chapter 4, I'm going to read from verse 2. He said, he came to Nazareth where he has been brought up. As his custom went, he went into the synagogues on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of Isaiah, uh, prophet Isaiah. And when he has opened the book, he found the place where it was written. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim deliverance to the captive and the recovering of sight to the blind, to set a liberty day that have bruised, to pre the accept acceptable deal of the Lord. The day of vengeance is not there. The day of vengeance is not there. So all these activities were carried on by our Lord Jesus Christ. Our mission, if you read down, down Isaiah 61, uh, because of time, I have to, you know, uh, limit myself, you know, restrain myself, because I don't want to take all the time there could be somebody. If you read, read it down, if you read that whole chapter, you will see what the Lord expects from us to do. Mm. The waste places, all those things, you know, that is, just read it, read it. You will see the role that we are to carry out in this dispensation. So the day of vengeance, of our God is committed to us. Mm. We are, brethren, the Lord, as long as we are yielded to him, you will be enlisted in this last day, I mean. It's not going to continue like this, brethren. If you look at the E that is going now, right now, the church in Nigeria, they, they are incapacitated. Is it the killing? Is it the full and rapey women killing them? Fear and apprehension? The church, they don't know what to do. Why? The church is weak right now in Nigeria, especially because they have not been able to play their role. It is the uh, commercialism, how to make money, how to buy jet, how to do this, how to do that. That is just what is ready. So where will the power come from? They cannot. They, they too cannot. The Bible says you cannot serve two masters. So what is the law saying to you and I, brethren? The type of love, the kind of love that I see in this church for God is scarce. When I came to this US, when I started, I wanted to go to church. I chose this church because when I listened to the message, the church that I was taking to, that, if you see the population, brethren, I wasn't looking for population. 
I was looking for where I will hear the word that will help my life. So as long as you are, you keep dedicating yourself, consecrating yourself, God will enlist you. We are to declare the day of vengeance of our God. As we prepare, our God will bring us to that place where he will give us prophetic work, where we will decree. What makes Nebuchadnezzar to become a, a, like animal for seven years? He did not grab. The Bible says it was the degree of the holy water. The holy water pronounced that upon him. It's not. God will only endorse it. Brethren, we have work. God will use you, use you as, as a dedicated person. All those things that, all those people that are just using people, prophesy, giving false dreams, and molesting them, abusing them, defiling them, ripping them, we will declare vengeance on them as the Lord pre finish preparing the praise the Lord so, Hallelujah. Hmm. Wow. That was very powerful. I have nothing to add there. <laughs> More comments? We have about nine minutes. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you very much. Uh, Saki, thank you. you um, you've actually covered the whole thing. And thanks, uh, Pastor Mrs. Thank you, Brother B, Bra Mike, and uh, Star Bridget. Um, the question that we need to ask ourselves. And it's very simple. And the topic of today was titled Kingdom, Keeping the Worship of God Pure. Keeping it pure, meaning that only God is being served. Man is not being served. Nothing else is being served, but God alone being served. That is the reminder that Moses was giving to the children of Israel that among them, there will be false people that will rise up among them, which we see today. And thank God, because each and every one of us has contributed. And I thank you for bringing it home. That how do we see ourselves? And none of us, trust me, none of us want to be born again today and then fall into the end of the deceiver. But as we, if, you're, if you're joining our devotional every morning, we, what we talked about day before yesterday and what we talked about yesterday and what we talked about today now is summarizing what we are talking about tonight. And basically what we talked about two days ago is the old nature and new nature. And uh, we talked about, uh, about the prayer can change your life. And uh, I think three days ago, we talked about the secret of surviving the trial. This is all of these things that polish us, that open our eye of understanding of who we are and who we are serving. When we are serving God in truth and in spirit, all of those things that we're talking about falling into the end of the false prophet will not be the case because our eye of understanding will be enlightened. The spirit of God will point out what is going on to us. I think. Pastor Mrs. said that people are lazy, or is it separated? I said people are lazy that they don't want to get close to God to know God. They want to get microwave use of what God has for them. And God wants to build individual relationship. He doesn't want you to be going to profit. That's why Jesus came. Before Jesus came, they were going to the prophet, prophet go to G to God for them. But when Jesus came, he said, I'm going to the Father. I will send you a helper, the Holy Spirit, that will guide you through to all truth. But we don't want to sacrifice to allow the Holy Spirit to flow through us. We want to go back and still take in the message from the prophet when we ourselves are prophet. But the key thing tonight is that speaking to us is our life turning people to God or is our life turning people to hell? That is the question. Because the Bible says, Brother Toby said, Paul talking about whoever is the one that is, uh, that, is, uh, that is preaching. And even the angel come to you to tell you anything other than what Christ said. That angel should be killed. Jesus Christ actually said the word that whoever, you are his children. And what Jesus was talking about that we talked about the little children. You are God's children. In the book of Matthew, chapter 18, verse 6, 
Jesus said, Matthew 18, verse 6, he said, if anyone calls one of these little ones, which you and I, cause them, those who believe in him, to stumble, meaning there is a repercussion for our life result. Is our life resulting to edifying God in it? Or our life is resulting in edifying self? And we now make ourselves to be worshiping. People come to worship. People come to look. People cannot do anything until they, they hear from us. People cannot. That's that's what we are talking about here. That we now, oh, people cannot do anything unless they find a job. Thank you for bringing that job, cell phone, social media, um, party, and all of those activities that fulfill the lust of flesh. All the things that our five senses crave for. They are deadly. I'm going to repeat that. Everything that entices our five senses, they are deadly. They are deadly because they are going to pass away. So our five senses must be subject to the guidance of the Holy Spirit, must be subject to the guidance of who God, what God says. Because when our five senses give us an idea, if we come out to be against God because the Bible said the flesh fight against the spirit. They are enmity to each other. So most of the thing that our flesh yearn for is against what the spirit wants. Try it. You will find out. God wants you to do something. It will be inconvenient for you. But you will tell yourself that, yeah, God wants it to so forget about your inconveniency. I'm doing it. That's where we need to get to. So that people that are watching us, they will not misinterpret our action to say it's okay. Because we are now a light that needs to light the road for people that are looking at us. They are looking at us and they want to walk in the way of the Lord. If our way is not walking in the direction of God, that means we are misleading them. And Jesus said, it would be better for that person to have large stone, milestone hung on his neck and be thrown into the depth of the sea. I pray for yourself tonight, that Lord, do not let my life mislead anybody to hell. Because that is what God was telling them. Yeah, Moses was telling the people that make the worship of the Lord in your life, make it holy. Some will rise up among us. They will use magic to tell you, yeah, this is, they will create it. There is a lot of things out there that we, and you know, that's just because we enjoy everything that five senses says. Magic is entertaining to us. It arouses our emotion and it makes our mind think that, wow, wow, it did that. Then those people now, we gravitate to them. We want to talk to them and they draw us in. And when they get us in, they will tell us, oh, we are this way and that's that way. You go on and they will want to tell us to start thinking about how to make extra money, how they can do all of those things and we buy into it. Now we can't sleep unless we hear what they have to say. We are no longer acknowledging God in our life. And that, is dead. that brethren is deadly. Any time that you wake up in the morning and you have to think about the pastor or you think about the bishop of well, without thinking about God first, you're walking on the right, wrong path, though, I'm telling you. Because your four primary assignment is your relationship with God. Make it holy, make it pure, and walk in his direction. Otherwise, you will be misled. It's not, I'm not cursing anybody. If you don't have God in your life to make a prayer, a, a, a lifestyle in your life, anything will go your way. But when you are walking in the spirit, the spirit will tell you what is going on. It's in contrary to what God wants. Then you become that light that radiates, that people will see and say, yes, show me that God. Then you won't show them yourself. You will take them to the word. And you will go on your knee with them and you will pray with them. Then you will introduce them to that Holy Spirit that you have. Then that Holy Spirit take over their lives and start working in them and start making them, polishing them, training them and working with them. Because the word of God is powerful. It changes everything. And I pray that God will help us as we follow him.
in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Pastor, for rising it all for us. Um, it's time to pray. Let us pray. Let us thank God for this wonderful session. Let us pray that the Holy Spirit will interpret it for so our heart more. Amen. We will not live a life that will lead people to hell. We will not, we will not allow the things of this world to pull us away from God. In the name of Jesus, yes, Lord, Shatan, and our Father, help me, help me, help me to rely on you, to rely on you, that I will not live a life that we mislead on. My life, Lord, help me to live it according to your will. Help me to live right with you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. That I will follow your precept. I will follow your I will follow the guidance of the Holy Spirit in everything that I do. In the mighty name of Jesus. Because you said in your word that your kingdom is not of this world. That if we were your servants, that we will find the arrest of the Jewish leader. But Lord, your kingdom is not of this world. Your kingdom is of heaven, Lord. Help us to focus on that kingdom. Help us to focus on that kingdom. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, my God, help us, Lord, help us to come to by the things of this world because of my empty things in the mighty name of Jesus. And I'm thinking that many help me tonight to Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Continue to be with you forever in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Also, Mrs. Hay, please wrap up for us. Yes. Eternal Rock of Ages, we thank you for tonight again. We thank you for this beautiful section that you've opened our eyes. Thank you. You've enlightened us, O oh Lord, in another dimension of your, of your glory. Father, we thank you. As many that they are in bondage tonight, O oh Lord, Father, Lord, we pray for them. Because so many people are in bondage as we speak. So many people believe in so much in the prophets that they are running, they put all their life upon it, that they've put everything that belongs to them in the line, in the, in the feet of the prophets. Father, as you know, your children are going astray. Father, your, your plan for us, you said they are plans of good and to lead us to the expected end. And what is your expected end that you have for us, O oh Lord? That eternal life that you say we will sit down with you in your paradise. Father, tonight, O oh Lord, we're interceding for all your children that have been led astray. Tonight, O oh Lord, Father, that you will draw them back in the mighty name Amen. of Jesus. Whatever that will make them to be, to be blindfolded, Father, tonight, O oh Lord, we ask that, Lord, let your blood that you shed on the cross of the Calvary that makes that curtain to break into two pieces uh, and you set in your liberation into the life of everyone all over the earth. Father, Lord, let that blood, oh Lord, let it open the eyes of your children Amen. and bring them back in the mighty name Amen. of Jesus Christ. Eternal rock of ages, even though some of us that we still know that it's it's we, we that we've been liberated tonight about the prophets or the or dreamers or whatever, Father, some of us still have you know this division upon our hearts that we still believe that until when we see them before our solution can be solved, Father Lord. Grant them the trust that you, you that your trust upon them, O oh Lord, Amen. and give them that, that boldness to come back to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. Anything that is bringing division upon their heart, thinking that they are not sure, that they are not sure of themselves, Father, let them know tonight that every one of us, O oh Lord, you have called us to be the, 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 the priest. Yes, and the and the, and the king that is what you say you say your blood has made us has cleansing us and you've made us to sit with you yes, father lord tonight oh lord let every one of us be liberated in the mighty name Amen. of jesus let every one of us be set free in the mighty name of Amen. jesus because i can still see there are some mind in this line oh lord that they are still being being being, being confused uh, that am i not going to listen to the prophet any longer or what uh, lord Help them, O oh Lord, enlighten them tonight in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Right? That, the, the, that what they are looking for, those power, whatever that they are looking for, you said all authority and power has been given to you. 
Father, that is what you say. And that authority, you have passed it on to us, O Lord. Because why, O Lord? You say you call us friends and you call us brethren and you did not see us as a slave. And that is the reason why everything that you receive from the Father, you did not hide it away from us, O Lord. Mm. You release it unto us. Yes. Father, release that boldness unto your children tonight in the mighty name Amen. of Jesus. As many as we have gathered and whoever that is listening tonight, O Lord. Father, Lord, let that boldness and the freedom come upon them, O Lord. Set them out from that bondage tonight in the mighty name of Jesus Amen. Christ. Father, Lord, you said your word set free, O Lord. Father, let your word go out, O Lord, tonight, O Lord. As many that they are in this world tonight, O Lord, let them be set free Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. You say you sent your word and you heal them, O Lord. Father, heal all your children in the Amen. mighty name of Jesus tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus, as we are going to bed tonight, O Lord, we commit our family, we commit our everyone that is related to us, O oh Lord. Father, tonight as we are sleeping, let your angels, O oh Lord, let them guide us all through in the mighty name of Jesus. Anything called nightmare, Father, we cancel it tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, you said by your blood, O oh Lord, you have made us to be conquerors, O oh Lord. Father, give us authority, O oh Lord, uh, to destroy every attack of the evil one, O oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Every principality, every walk of the darkness tonight, O oh Lord, that they are man manipulating our destiny, that they are manipulating our progress, that they are manipulating our spiritual growth. Father, tonight, O oh Lord, let them crumble before you in the mighty name of Jesus. We cover our home with the precious blood of Jesus. We cover our family, our children, our job, O oh Lord. Anything relating to Lord, O oh Lord, we cover it with the blood of Jesus. We cover all our marriages with the blood of Jesus. O oh Lord, we thank you tonight, O oh Lord. We give you praise for this ability to gather together because it is not by mistake that we have gathered tonight, O Lord. And it is not by mistake that each one of us has logged in into this Zoom tonight, but because God has something good for us, O Lord. Father, Lord, we pray that by this time next week when we come back, Father, let there be testimony for every one of us in the mighty name of Jesus, concerning your word that you bring unto, unto us today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Glory, honor, adoration unto you alone. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Share the, share the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. I'm the one the Lord has blessed. So shall it do in Jesus' name. Uh, thank Amen. you, Sir K, for leading tonight. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Remember, there is you are a prophet as well. And there will be people that will prophesy with, for you. It's not like we're telling you that we shouldn't listen to prophets. There is always going to be a prophecy. But the prophecy that's pushing you towards God is what we are talking about. Anything that we take, that we replace God in prophecy in your life is what we are saying that you should reject. Spend time in the word, spend time in prayer, ask God to show you things that you need to know. You are given that power because those that have accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and their savior, to them he has given the power, the spirit to become the sons of God. And that will help us all in the mighty name of Jesus. You have a wonderful evening. I cover you with the blood of Jesus. Thank you for joining. God bless you. Have a good evening. Mm -hmm.